Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So this is Act 6.1, and this is quest number 5. Now before we go in, I wanted to show you guys my resources. This is my overflow, so you can see how many level 1 revives I have, how many health potions, how many level 3 team revives I have. I bought that offer when I first completed 6.1 there was an offer for 12,000 units and I purchased that you can see that video on the channel and part of that package were several level 3 revives team revives and that sort of thing so we need to use those up now I already did that path off to the left uh, that video is on the channel but you'll notice that I was missing the boss fight well, this time I have the boss fight, which is Crossbones. He is the most difficult boss in Act Point Six, in my opinion. So this time I'm going straight down uh, the middle here. And the reason that I'm doing that is because there are T2 Alpha Fragments on this path. And I need those because I'm planning to rank up my Ghost and I'm very close to having all the T2 alphas I need. So, first up, we're fighting Nightcrawler, and you saw the nodes that I had to deal with. That brute force can be annoying, especially with Nightcrawler. If you're not able to switch him early, this fight can be very painful. As it was, it was still a longish fight. I don't really like long fights, but this fight would have been a nightmare if I was not able to switch this Nightcrawler. Alright, so once you switch Nightcrawler, his specials are very easy to evade. All Nightcrawler has really going for him are those auto evades. So once you switch him, which will turn those off, uh, he goes into swashbuckling mode as you saw earlier, he's not going to auto evade anymore. So at this point, it's basically baiting out his specials and just taking him down. Now, one of the things about this path that I'm going down here, when I first did this Act 6.1.5, off to the left, it turned off Bane for the boss. None of the other paths do that. So, this time, when we're fighting the boss, we're going to have to deal with Bane on top of dealing with all the rest of the shenanigans that they have for us uh, on that boss. Alright, so as you can see, I'm running both Suicides, Liquid Courage, and Double Edge. That's the only reason that he's doing even somewhat decent damage with his Glaive Charges down. Once his Glaive Charges are down, there's no reason for me to do my Medium Light Medium attack anymore. So I just do full hit combos and just wait it out. They're about to come back and here they're back. So now I'm gonna do my guaranteed crits as you can see, boom, boom, and it's over with. Pretty long, Corvus does not excel with long fights, but I wanted to do that fight with Corvus because Nightcrawler is a mutant and that is one of the missions that you need to complete for Corvus. And so, of course, I was going to take that guy with Corvus. All right, so now we're going to be facing Aegon. And you see what we have to deal with here. That unblockable, it's not as bad as it may seem because it's only the specials. And Aegon specials are easy to avoid, both of them. All right, so there's no reason for me to bring Corvus in here. He can't pick up a mission, so I brought in my Starkey. So the basic strategy when you're fighting with Starkey is to build up his poise charges. Because I have Blade as well, he started off with poise charges, and as you can see here, he's already at max poise charges, and I was already against the wall, but now I'm ready to attack. I'm hitting him to his block so that I can give myself a little bit more room. You don't want to be fighting in the corner if you can help it. Okay, and you can see there, it's unblockable, but it was pretty easy to avoid and he's really easy to fight honestly uh, that was a mistake there I thought I was 
going to take him out, but I didn't, so I took recoil damage. Didn't mean to take recoil damage there, but, you know, it happens. All right, so he wasn't too much of a problem, and that happened because I tried to click on the next node, and, of course, the uh, little menu thing there was covering it. But now we're facing sentry, and I don't see anything here that would give me any problem except that coin flip. Now, I'm very cynical about coin flip. I have found that it likes to give me degen more often than I think is good for a random, you know? But you'll see here it didn't turn out horribly bad. But look at that. First things first, we're degening. All right? And that's pretty much what I was expecting. Okay, but now we're regening. Good old coin flip. And so I'm still wanting to bait out or, you know, build up the poise charges here and then go in for the attack. But then I decided, you know what, let's just go ahead and hit him when the opportunity arises. But I'm still trying to build up the poise charges in the middle here, uh, like you see there. But when I have an opportunity, I go for it. You know, here we go. And Starkey just does so much damage. And I'm not worried about his special two. Boom, boom. And we don't want to deal with his special three, I'll tell you that. Uh, now, in case you guys don't remember, the global node, basically, I don't generate any power. The only time I get a bar of power is when my opponent gets a bar of power. And I get two bars of power if they get two bars of power. So that's why you saw as soon as I could, I fired off that special too, because once he fires off his special, it drains me of all power. So it's basically a use it or lose it. All right, so you can see the nodes here. Nothing that I need to be really concerned with, to be honest with you. Uh, Vulture is not difficult to fight. So because he's tech, I brought in Corvus because that's another mission for Corvus. And at this point, I couldn't remember. I don't think I fought anybody else that was tech. So this will be a great mission for him. He already has a couple of missions under his belt. And I'm running both suicides. So you can see he is just chewing through this vulture. Okay. Vultures, specials, both of them are very easy to avoid. You basically have to just range both of them. That's it. You know, there's nothing else that you need to do. And you can see here, I'm like, okay, I want to bait out that special one. But if I could have pushed him to a special two, I would have finished the fight off with a special two. But it's all good. We took him down without too much difficulty. So far, so good. Now, next up is Ghost Rider. Now, I scouted my path out earlier. And I already knew that I was going to be bringing in uh, blade for this fight. Now you can see here you got stun immunity and you've got Bane to deal with along with some of the other ones. Now that major league that was a little bit of a concern because I don't have anyone that is large or extra large. All right. And so blade if I remember correctly I think blade is a medium um, I believe so. I don't think he's small. He's medium, I believe. And he gets danger sense against Ghost Rider. That's the main reason that I wanted to bring him in here. All right, so I'm going to be taking a little bit more damage, but I knew that Blade could also heal it up. Again, we're dealing with Bane, so you can see that Bane timer. Now, if you're not familiar with Bane, uh, most of you I'm pretty sure are, but it is a degen that once it's on you, once you hit your opponent, it transfers. And now you see there's a timer. Once that timer expires, which it's about to right now, it switches over to me until I can hit him and transfer it back. So the whole strategy is to keep a watch on that. And when it's about to expire like this, he's going to fire his special. There's nothing I can do. I just have to wait it out. Now, the amount of damage that 
the Bane does on you depends on their health. So the fact that he has little health, when Bane got on me, it wasn't doing a lot of damage. But early into the fight, when it gets on you, you are going to be hurting bad. But we got him down, didn't lose too much health, uh, still haven't needed to use uh, any items. And I do want to because otherwise I'm just going to sell them and they'll expire or I sell them. All right, so now we're dealing with this Medusa. And I've got a bone to pick with this Medusa. She was stun immune, she was the boss, and she ripped me up. So now, I want a little payback. So I'm going in here, she's stun immune if I remember correctly, and Corvus is a great option for her, okay? And he's got his missions, and I'm just gonna tear her up, honestly. But one of the things that I don't have to worry about is her stun. I don't have to worry about getting auto-blocked and stunned in this uh, fight, if I remember correctly. I didn't want to risk it, but I don't believe that you need to worry about that because they don't have the masteries unless it actually says something about parry. But in any case, we weren't even going to play with that. We fought her the way that we know to fight her and took her down. Alright, and those are the T2 Alpha Fragments that I uh, went for this path for and now we're gonna fight the boss now as I said earlier crossbones here when I did it the first time he uh, didn't have Bane because I went on that left path and took Bane out but to be honest with you I actually found that Bane was helpful because it was doing damage because of the way that I approached this fight, it actually helped out. Alright? Now, first in, I'm going in with Iceman. Now, Iceman can do this fight, but a couple of things. First of all, I'm running Suicide, so every time I fire off the special one, I'm going to be taking recoil damage. Secondly, it's a long fight with Iceman. And I don't like long fights. I am not about that life at all. So all I went in here to do was to get warmed up and to play around. Now look at that Bane just chewing away at me. Okay. But again, I was not trying to do anything except see kind of how the fight was going to go. Um, what that Bane was like and that sort of thing. But my strategy is going to be to use Corvus over and over again but first I decided to go ahead and, and boost up and again blade not a good option for this fight as you'll see here but all I'm doing is trying to do a little bit of damage he's going to get arc overload eventually but I don't plan to be alive when that happens so I just do a little damage and then die that's it okay so Next up, Captain America Infinity War. And again, not planning on doing any kind of real damage, but I was hoping to fire off maybe a special two if I could. Okay, so if I can make it to a special two and fire that off, maybe get a crit, it'd be great. Now, right there, I messed up because he had a special two and I thought I had a special two as well but it turned out that I didn't have a special two and so I just went all in like that and had he not fired off his uh, special three I would have just quit the fight because I don't want him to heal back up alright but we didn't have to do that he fired off his special and on to the next one and that's gonna be Starkey we are saving the best for last I already know Starkey is not gonna be able to do it He's not bleed immune, and I'm running suicides, so the only thing that I wanted to do here was to see how much damage I could actually do. So I was building up the poise charges a little bit. Don't have to worry about Bane. Now, I knew that Arc Overload was going to trigger and he was going to heal up a little bit, but I'm gambling that when I finally do go in like this, between Bane and how much Starkey hits, 
he was going to do a lot more damage than what that, you know, Arc Overload healed up. And he did, you know, a little bit. So, this Crossbones ended that fight with less health than I went in there with with Starkey. That was all my goal was. All right, so now you will get to see the strategy that I used the first time I went in here. Now, the first time I went in here, again, I didn't have to deal with Bane. It took me eight revives, but I used the same method, okay? All I'm doing here is going in, doing full five-hit combos, not the medium-light mediums that I normally would, and trying to do as much damage as possible. That's it. That's the entire fight. I got a special two off. And at this point, I'm just trying to do as much damage before that arc overload hits in. Fire it off. Go down. Revive. Do it again. That is my entire strategy. Okay? But look at how much damage Corvus was able to do this time. Again, the boost... And I'm running double suicide. So the first time when I did uh, eight revives, I was only running double edge, and I didn't boost. This time I do the 10% uh, boost. I'm running both liquid courage and double edge. So that might also account for how much better it was this time than it was the last time. Now that time I just messed up. Uh, I don't know. He was fighting a little bit differently. He was... Uh, hitting into my block a lot and I couldn't seem to evade him like I, I was doing before. And so I'm just like, okay, well, that's fine. I was expecting, you know, to use eight revives at least on this guy. And that last fight went much better than I thought it would. I don't even think I was able to get a lot of special twos off uh, the first time I went in here against him. And down he is. So this guy is the hardest boss in here, but that time it went very, very smoothly. So that's going to do it, guys. Click like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. Hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully you'll uh, have an even better time than I did. And you guys have a blessed day.